Hello, good morning. Thank you for coming to the CIO with the Center of uh, Operation Research. Uh, it's a pleasure for me for, to introduce Professor Christian Russo. He is a professor from the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaíso in Chile. He, he has a PhD from the Technical University of Romania, but he is living in Chile from 1999. Okay, she is working in human computer interaction. Today is going to present his talk about assessing experiences. He is going to introduce the concept of usability, user experience, and how these concepts have evolved. Usability evolves to user experience, and user experience have evolved to customer experience. So they are going to present us the works in the university, in the research group, and how he is working in, in this concept and how uh, we can measure and he can, we can evaluate, we can assess this, this content. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Uh, thank for your invitation. It's really a pleasure to be here in this wonderful university and uh, with wonderful people. So I hope this will be just the, the uh, first point of our uh, uh, long collaboration. Okay, uh, as Federico said, uh, I'm, I, I was born, uh, raised and educated in Romania, uh, but I'm living in Chile now and I'm at Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaiso since 2002, so almost 15 years. Uh, okay, uh, I start working in uh, HCI uh, more or less at the same time. Uh, first of all, a bit about Chile. It's a very long, uh, large uh, country as a Chile, but it's not a Chile, okay? <laughs> um, so we are located in the central region of Chile. As you probably know, we have uh, everything from uh, desert in the north to Patagonia in the south. But we are located quite near to Santiago, actually like uh, 100 kilometers from uh, Santiago and from Santiago Airport. So it's quite easy to get there if you want. It's a wonderful place to visit. Uh, Valparaiso and uh, Viña del Mar are twin cities. Actually, the metropolitan area of Valparaiso has uh, around uh, 1 million people. Uh, so uh, Valparaiso is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's uh, quite famous for uh, his uh, uh, houses uh, in bright colors and for his elevators. Uh, also, we have a very large harbor, which used to be very important in the 19th century, uh, before uh, the Panama Canal was built, but it gained more uh, and more relevance today. Uh, so we have a wonderful view, actually I have a nice view over the, the ocean from my office, from my house or everywhere. Okay, uh, so this is uh, Valparaiso. It's uh, known as the cultural, the Chilean cultural capital. Uh, it's, uh, it has many universities, uh, four uh, so-called traditional universities, but, but uh, almost uh, 10 private universities, so more than 15 universities. And we have students from all uh, Chile, from the north, the south, the central region, everywhere. Okay, Viña del Mar, it's uh, known as the garden city. As you see, we have a lot of uh, 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 green areas. Uh, it's also known for uh, the International Song Festival. A lot of uh, Spanish people are coming there each year. And uh, it's considered the, place, the best place to live and work in Chile. Uh, usually the people live in uh, uh, Viña del Mar, myself included, and work in uh, Valparaiso. Okay, something about uh, my city. It was uh, uh, founded in 1928. It's so-called a traditional university. It got the title of Pontificia in 2003 when, uh, 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 well, uh, it was 75 years, so it was marked by uh, this title of uh, Pontificia. We have uh, more or less the same uh, number of students as uh, this university, around 15,000 uh, students. 
and 10% of them are graduate students. We have uh, 15 PhD programs, including our program, a PhD in Informatics Engineering, and more than 50 master program and almost 20 campuses. This is quite difficult to manage because you have, uh, uh, you are lucky to have uh, just one uh, big campus and some others, but uh, mainly this central campus. Okay, uh, the School of Informatics Engineering is uh, one of the, um, uh, the oldest one in uh, Latin America. It was founded in the 70s, which is quite uh, uh, important for Latin America. Uh, we have more or less uh, 700 students, and again, like 10% of the students are graduate students, master or uh, PhD students. We have two undergraduate programs. In Chile, uh, things are quite different. Uh, we don't have uh, this uh, Bologna Convention. So uh, one of the program lasts six years. So just imagine six years of undergraduate program. Then the master, then the PG. So it's a very, very uh, long period. Okay, uh, we initiated the master program in 2006, so 10 years ago. And we have more than 100 graduate people, uh, like 150 uh, now. And we started the PhD program in uh, 2011. Uh, I used to be the head of the master program, then the head of the PhD program, and it was enough. <laughs> I quit uh, the, the, this position last year. Uh, okay, uh, we already have uh, three uh, PhD uh, since last year, in October, November and December, which is quite good because in 2011 we started the program with four students and three of them are already uh, uh, got the PhD. Um, another important thing is uh, the rules of graduation. Uh, we uh, have uh, established that uh, they have to have at least one ISI uh, paper uh, in a journal, ISI journal. Okay, so this is quite difficult to accomplish sometimes because, as you know, the review process, the reviewing process is quite large, sometimes two years or more. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Something about, uh, okay, this should be working, but it's not working, doesn't matter. I was just, I will use this one. Uh, something about our research group. Actually, there are not formal research group in Chilean University. However, we founded the, our research group back in 2007. We started working in uh, HCI, uh, Human Computer Interaction, in 2003. Uh, we first uh, thought the courses in English. It was quite challenging and quite an experience, quite an interesting experience, 100% in English. Uh, then in 2006 it was an important milestone because it was the first uh, master program, undergrad, uh, sorry, graduate program that included HCI as compulsory uh, subject at graduate level for the first time in Latin America. In the same year we uh, opened two usability labs and uh, a year later, we formed a, a research group in uh, human-computer interaction. Why UCV? Because mainly focused on usability, so use. And UCV because the former name of the university was Universidad Católica de Valparaiso, so it was a kind of game. Uh, in 2011, HCI became a research area at PhD level, a declared research area. Uh, so we have one PhD uh, who graduated uh, last November, one PhD candidate, we have the candidate uh, uh, exam uh, like in the uh, United States, and uh, one PhD student now working in uh, my area and a lot of other students. We have more than 15 uh, PhD students uh, these days. Uh, we also uh, start teaching uh, some other optional subject, uh, web engineering, usability engineering, but not technological, 
uh, technology oriented but usability uh, oriented always thinking on users what we did this year uh, all these years uh, research project uh, consultancy I think this is a very important point and uh, actually uh, software companies in Chile are asking for usability certification so it's a it's a very important uh, contact between uh, uh, research teaching and practice uh, this is lectures papers we also uh, we are also organizing World Usability Day each year since 2006 we have collaboration with, with a lot of foreign university uh, there is also a link with theory and practice uh, I also I always stress uh, about the importance the relevance of the practice uh, and also as I told you uh, consultancy so the link uh, acad uh, academia uh, software companies our research focuses mainly on usability and uh, these days on user experience I will later talk a bit about the different as I see the different uh, between the two concepts we also have uh, new HCI research topics because HCI is evolving each day I have no idea what HCI will be in 10 or uh, 20 or 30 years uh, we have more than 50 index papers in the last let's say uh, 10 years okay what about HCI in Chile uh, we tried to initiate an ACM Sikai Chilean chapter back in 2012, but I have no idea if it's still active. I used to be the chair of the chapter, but unfortunately, the big problem is there's no cooperation between Chilean university. There's no cooperation even between academic units of the same university, unfortunately. And this is quite uh, challenging in HCI because obviously HCI it's a interdisciplinary field so we should cooperate but this doesn't happen well uh, we also organized a conference Chile Kai uh, back in 2013 uh, Federico was there it was a very nice conference more than 100 people if I remember uh, but I don't know if it will be the last one. It was the first one, but I don't know if there will be another Chile Kai. Uh, we also organize a lot of conferences. I'm participating, uh, among others, in Rokai uh, many years, each year actually. Uh, we also or I, we are organizing right now this year uh, Clay Conferencia Latinoamericana and in Informatica, which is the oldest conference in Latin America, and it will be organized in uh, Valparaiso this year in my university. And you still have the time to send the paper if you want. It's a very nice place to be, so uh, you are all invited to come uh, to Chile. Uh, it's important because this conference was initiated in our school, actually. The logo of the conference is the logo of our school. So back in the 70s, it was an informal meeting between people that used to work in uh, computer science or informatics in the 70s, and that uh, it uh, you know uh, continues till uh, till uh, today. Actually, it's a huge conference, like 14 more or less uh, uh, simultaneous conferences. Okay, so we are fully inserted uh, in the Chilean reality, but also in the international reality. Uh, some events that we are organizing, for instance, where World Usability Days, we um, usually have uh, uh, invited lecturers, uh, normally uh, foreign people. We, also, we always want to see another point of view. I think this is very, very important. Uh, usability labs. Okay, so uh, I want to talk a bit about usability, user experience uh, as HCI topics. What happens with these topics in the, EH, uh, in the computer science curricula? Then I would like to 
express my point of view about usability, user experience, customer experience. Again, it's a subjective perspective. Uh, something about our work and some conclusions. Okay, so human-computer interaction, I will not uh, refer to the formal definition of a, uh, HCI, but uh, it's interesting that after more than two decades, is still a working definition. As ACM Sikai said in their site, website, there is still a working definition. So that means there is no general agreement about what it is HCI. As, as I, and as I told you, I have no idea what HCI will be in some more decades. Okay, uh, so uh, the curricular proposal for computer science uh, of ACIM and IEEE uh, back in 2013, uh, it was a previous one in uh, 2008, as far as I remember, declared 11, uh, sorry, uh, 18 uh, computer science areas and one of this area is HCI. Now what about usability and user experience? Usability is a compulsory core HCI topic. This is established by both ACM and IEEE. But user experience is not ex uh, explicitly incorporated as a core HCI topic yet. Things are changing but uh, it's not yet incorporated. Something about usability, well, I like uh, this definition of the ISO standard, which is quite uh, old, but it's updated regularly. Actually, as uh, I remember, the last version is from 2010, and it's under uh, construction. <laughs> so it will be redefined. So there are some papers about redefining the standard. What is, it, what is important here? We cannot talk about usability as a general uh, quality attribute. No. If we want to define usability, we we'll have to think on specified user, myself, you, 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 or other user, specified goals, what do I have to do with the software product in our case, with effectiveness, efficiency, satisfaction. These are general uh, criteria uh, used by all HCI researchers. There are other topics involved, but usually all researchers are referring to efficiency, effect, uh, effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. And very important these days, a specified context of use. It's not the same if I'm using a website uh, through my notebook, to my PC, or through my uh, mobile. Uh, another important issue is that usability does not refer only to software system. Also refer to product in general or services. Okay, now I like this separation, these two concepts, uh, established by Lewis and others, uh, Lewis uh, two years ago. So there are two tendencies or two major conceptions. One assumative and the, the other one a formative uh, conception. What does it mean? As engineers, we like numbers. We like to measure things. In usability, not everything can be measured. So. If we want to measure, we have to use metrics. And these metrics are established usually by standards. So, okay, it's correct to say measurement-based usability. I don't like at all the concept of measuring usability. How can you measure something so diverse? My point of view, your point of view, the other point of view, and so many criteria. So, if we refer to metrics, okay, it's correct to say measurement. But if not, more important is diagnostic usability. We have to diagnose, we have to identify problems. Why? 
because we identify, if we identify problems, we can solve the problems as engineers. If not, we have no idea why the metrics are, the values are so low or uh, so poor. Okay, so this is usually achieved by usability evaluation methods. We work a lot in this area, diagnostic usability. So heuristic evaluation and usability heuristics. User experience is a concept, a broader concept. So any perception, perception or response of a person that results from the use or even the anticipated use of something. Again, not only, not only uh, software system, also product or service. User experience is not a new concept. It was established back in 2010 and before, and it's redefined again. Actually, there is a white paper since 2011, and uh, many researchers try to establish a definition of what user experience is. There is a white paper with many, many distinct uh, perceptions, but not uh, general agree definition. So what is user experience? Everything that we can perceive. Even before using a product. I'm shopping, I'm watching uh, clothes or something, so I already have a perception before checking if it fits me or not. So I have a previous a preconception, a prejudice about the product, and in our case, about the software system. Okay, what about usability and user experience? Many authors, most of the authors, consider user experience as an extension of the usability concept. If we can measure efficiency, efficacy, and satisfaction in achieving some goals, specific goals, it's quite difficult to evaluate perception, any kind of perception of the person involved. Okay, even the Usability Professional Association, formerly known as UPA, redefined itself back in 2014 as User Experience Professional Association. So it's a clear tendency of passing from usability to user experience. Okay, uh, Luis again defined usability as a subset of UX. And what it comes is service science. We cannot offer just isolated service or product. This is part of the whole experience as customer. And what it comes, again, sorry, it's the customer experience. If it's still difficult to define user experience, it's even more difficult to define customer experience. What does it mean customer experience? The, inter the interaction between an organization or several companies and the customer over the duration of their, their relationship, the whole duration. So not just one moment I'm using a website, but the whole experience. Okay, so what should we do? Normally, we can evaluate customer experience in touch points. So the contact points between the client and the whole services that the, confer the, the company is offering. So, it's quite difficult to evaluate user experience, but it's much more challenging to evaluate customer experience. Actually, uh, reading papers about customer experience, uh, one uh, usually find papers uh, related to marketing concept, not to HCI concept. Okay. What about usability, UX, and uh, customer experience? Well, traveling here to Spain, I bought a ticket through a KLM website. So, what I did was to buy a ticket. That means 
I can evaluate the usability in my perspective of the website thinking in one specific goal which one? to buy a ticket is this the only goal? no because after that I tried to check in impossible so this was another goal so I have to evaluate usability thinking always in a specific user specific goals and obviously a certain context it's not the same to buy a ticket at midnight at midday or in some other conditions or through a notebook through a mobile or through a pc okay so this is about usability we could not measure but evaluate or assess the usability the website usability what about user experience? It's more than just achieving a goal. Okay, I bought the ticket, that's why I'm here. But my perception, even if I uh, achieve the goal, can be very positive or very negative or whatever between, okay? So I think this is about user experience. And what about customer experience? This was just one touch point of my experience because I bought the ticket then uh, the day before I tried to check in impossible so awful experience uh, I didn't get the confirmation of my uh, ticket till the next day so I didn't know if the ticket was bought or not uh, I didn't know if they charged my credit card or not uh, I could even have a worse experience because normally uh, when I'm uh, buying services by internet I'm using virtual credit card where well, I learned my lesson because Air France and KLM uh, are checking your uh, virtual credit card are charging you one dollar and the credit card is over so you think you bought the ticket but it's not uh, really the case so after all this experience i went to santiago airport i had several touch points because for instance they changed kln changed my boarding pass in lima then again in amsterdam i have no idea why and then i came to alicante just imagine that I didn't get my uh, baggage. Fortunately, it wasn't the case. But in this case, well, I should fight with KLM because the visible face of the whole experience is KLM. So I should put the blame on KLM. But actually, I travel with three different airlines. So Sky Airlines, well, it's not my fault, you know. You bought the ticket by KLM, so we have no responsibility. And my last uh, leg of uh, the travel was to Transavia. Another nice experience because I had no idea they, that, that they don't offer food. So I was like, you know, freezing in the plane and, uh, uh, well, uh, no food, no uh, water, nothing. I should put the blame on KLM? Yes, because I bought the ticket through KLM. But actually, there were several touch points, as I said. So, evaluated the customer experience, I should evaluate all these touch points, the whole experience, okay? And my journey, my trip is not over yet. <laughs> I will go back in one week. I have no idea what surprise will I have? I know that I have to wait in Amsterdam more than eight hours. That's all I know. Okay, so how can we again measure? I don't like the term measure. I prefer evaluate, assess, not really measure. Some things can be measured, some others not. Usability, UX, CX. There are well-known and new methods to evaluate usability. But what about UX? If you check this website all about UX, 
you will find more than 80 methods, actually 86 methods to evaluate UX. Well, trying to review one by one, you will realize that not all these methods are really methods. Some are just tools, not really methods. So there are several problems with the concepts, okay? But again, a lot of methods. This is overwhelming for newcomers. How should I evaluate UX? Impossible, almost. Difficult task. And what about CX? Well, if I have so many touch points and I'm not evaluating just one website, just imagine, what can I do? Okay, so usability and UX methods may evaluate some CX aspects. But what about others? Well, obviously, we should try to assess uh, customer experience at least at each touch point and at least with two or many different methods to have different point of view, okay? What about our work? Uh, by far, our work uh, focused on usability heuristics for specific domains. You probably heard about uh, Nielsen's usability heuristics. They are well known for two decades or more, 25 years more or less, and quite common and used in every field. How can I use Nielsen's heuristics to evaluate a video game? Quite difficult, or a mobile application. So that is why we focus in developing specific usability heuristics. We also propose a methodology to develop usability heuristics because we realized that many authors are proposing something but the developing process of the tool, the instrument they propose, are, is not documented at all. So how do you achieve a set of heuristics? It's a mystery. Okay, we also propose methodology to evaluate usability UX in specific fields. Again, it's not the same to evaluate a video game or an e-commerce application. Uh, and lately, uh, actually in the last year, we tried to take a glimpse of what CX customer experience means. We also uh, work in several other areas, new kind of applications, new approaches, among others. For instance, uh, natural interaction, user uh, natural interaction. Okay. Uh, Speaking about usability heuristics, we propose a specific usability heuristics and associated checklists for many uh, applications. Among others, transactional website, smartphones, grid computing applications, ITV, virtual worlds, your learning, and so on. Some of these works are published, some others not yet. What we've done? Well, we didn't find a methodology to develop a specific instrument. So, you know, the logic, the good sense, the common sense uh, told us that sh we should consider domain characteristics. In, if I'm evaluating an e-commerce application, I should perfectly understand what e-commerce means and what characteristics this kind of application has then we have to take into account the generic heuristics well known for all evaluators. Then to try to find some other uh, alternative, so specific heuristics for the field that we are working on. Then we are trying to synthesize everything in a heuristic proposal. And the most challenging part is the validation. How can you validate a new instrument. Well, again, uh, experimental group, control group. Fortunately, we have enough people to work, uh, you know, with the scientific method. 
But this is not enough. So we are always trying to check if the problem that our proposal, our instrument, our heuristics identify are real problem. So we are also complemented this experiment with usability tests, with real uh, users. And always with feedback, not just one uh, iteration, usually four or more. Okay, uh, in 2011 we proposed a methodology to develop usability heuristics. Uh, as I told you, we didn't find one, so we tried to invent one. Uh, this is one of the most cited papers that we uh, presented. It's actually a very short paper, just four pages, and the methodology itself has just one page. So, what we proposed uh, not, was not only the methodology itself, so the six steps of the methodology, but also a template to define heuristics. As you can see, this template is quite similar to a pattern template, but it's quite useful to understand heuristics because, for instance, Nielsen's heuristics are limited to name and definition, and that's all. System visibility, what does it mean? A newcomer, a new evaluator, will not understand the mean, the real mean of the heuristics. So that, that is why our proposal uh, have always several uh, level of, you know, deepness. So if you want, you will use only the definition. If you need more details, you will find the explanation. If you want some examples, you will have examples you will understand the benefit and the problems when applying the heuristics. For instance, in the case of SMASH, uh, these are usability heuristics for smartphones. So that is why we call them SMASH. Uh, there is a heuristic uh, that you will not find in the set of Nielsen. It refers to physical interaction and ergonomics. So, there is the definition, the explanation, which is quite extensive. Then, examples, and here is an example. For instance, this heuristic says that with one finger, you should be able to touch the whole screen. So, this does not happen, for instance, in this particular case. So, this is an example of not accomplishing the heuristic, okay? What about assessing customer experience? Why did we try to, uh, you know, make the first step in this challenging field? Because we really think this is the future. We cannot think in just our small field, which is quite huge, by the way, HCI, but it's not everything about HCI. So we have to think what will come, okay? So our research interest in virtual travel agency initially focused on usability and we define in many iteration a set of heuristics for e-commerce. But most of the cases were actually virtual travel agencies. We proposed what? A methodology to evaluate transactional website and a set of heuristics. Then, we are evaluating vir virtual travel agency on a regular basis with our undergraduate and graduate students. Usually 30 undergraduate students each semester and 15, 20 graduate students. Uh, I just uh, received uh, the first report of my students evaluating, in this particular case, this semester, despegar.cl. There is a despegar.es also, yes? Okay, so we evaluated the Chilean version of despegar. 
there is an important feedback for both researching and teaching because we uh, realize what kind of problems does occur usually difficulties when associating a usability, uh, a usability problem with a specific heuristics and then trying to see if the heuristics is accomplished or not it's quite difficult for instance security what about security Nielsen says nothing about security which obviously is very important in a transactional website okay so we extended our research to user experience and recently to customer experience how well we thought customers opinions available on virtual travel agency for instance TripAdvisor will also include some remarks on usability but surprise there's no indication about the usability uh, the website usability so you are using a virtual travel agency but what you are finding as uh, uh, travelers comments it's about the service they, they, they purchased not about the website itself so uh, some other thing that we found it was that researches usually focus on qualitative data so customer comments so analyzing natural uh, language processing and analyzing customer comments customer feelings through comments okay so we focus on quantitative data how for instance in the case of trip advisor there is a lot of information pub publicly available so not only the comments here but also the overall rating and several dimension from cleanness to location room quality okay and that's not all there are also data about the kind of traveler family couple uh, single traveler business traveler uh, there is also indication about the time that the traveler did uh, his uh, uh, trip and a lot of other details what we did was to evaluate only numerical data so there is the overall rating and location sleep quality rooms service value and cleanliness all these are evaluating in a terrible to excellent scale this is an ordinal scale so not necessarily the difference between one and two is the same as the difference between two and three that is why uh, well we are start analyzing uh, with data uh, about hotels in Viña del Mar we found uh, 44 hotels and more than 3,000 reviews unfortunately not all reviews are complete so there are a lot of missing data that is why we uh, only selected the complete reviews so the review that evaluates all dimensions and we got this number of reviews um, less than 1000 as i said the scale is ordinal and no assumption of normality could be made that is why we use Spearman and Kruskal Wallis I'm sorry I'm not an expert in statistics I know this is a program in applied mathematics statistics and uh, uh, informatics but my wife is a specialist in statistics okay so she said we should use this okay these are the data as one could expect the overall rating is quite correlated with all dimensions but was interesting to find that location is not really the most important issue 
I mean, it's not a very strong correlation. And the strongest correlation is between the quality of room and the overall rating. Okay? Uh, so this was just in the case of Viña del Mar. And the second analyze that we did was to try to find if there are significant differences between different types of travelers. And we find out that the only case with significant differences is about cleanliness. That could mean that a family is much more interested in cleanliness than a single traveler, maybe. Okay, so more detailed analysis will be done. We have data, but we didn't analyze the full set of data. We also want to compare for instance, Viña del Mar with Santiago, with Lima, Peru, with uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, with some other cities, and with, why not, Madrid, Elche, Alicante, okay? We also want to see seasonal tendencies. Is it the same, the behavior or the opinion of the traveler in May or in October? Maybe not, we don't know we have to analyze data. What else? Now we are working with some other uh, case studies. Atrapalo, I understand that there is a Spanish version. We are working with the Chilean version and hostels. It's quite interesting because one would expect then a hostel traveler. It's quite different than a hotel traveler. We can also analyze, for instance, the behavior of a traveler of Sheraton Hotel in Madrid, in Viña del Mar, in Santiago, or somewhere else. Okay? So, this is what we did till now. Some conclusion. I have no idea about the time, but I hope I'm okay. Okay. Over more than three decades, usability was defined and redefined. And there are many opinions. Some researchers or practitioners are saying we are measuring usability. Again, I don't like the term. I prefer to say evaluate, assess, but not really measuring. Some aspects could be measured, some other not. Okay, UX is usually considered an extension of usability, but the terms are sometimes used indistinctly. So, you are talking about usability, UX. Well, it sounds better to say, I'm a UX designer. What does it mean? Uh, there are other terms like architecture information. Okay, what does it mean? The purpose, the goal is the same. You have to have happy customer, okay? So it doesn't matter if you are a computer scientist, uh, engineer, designer, or psychologist. The goal is the same. So the terms are important because you have to be, you know, uh, rigorous in your research work, in your teaching work, in your practice. If not, this confusion, what is usability, what is UX, uh, it, make, uh, it makes, makes a very bad publicity, you know? Because people don't really understand what is that. Why they are asking a huge amount of money for what, you know? And we don't have the financial resources as Apple or Microsoft have. Uh, as I told you, we are usually offering, offering, we are usually offering consultancies. So I think this is a very, very important issue. And sometimes Chilean software companies are even asking for usability certification. We are not an entity that can certify, but we can offer a diagnose. So we can offer a valid opinion and we are working quite, you know, scientifically. So that is why we are also mixing, you know, the teaching, pra the practice, and uh, the research. We are trying for to apply in practice 
the USX that we are proposing. For instance, the last uh, consultancy that we made was about a website of a private clinic. Of course, I cannot say the name, okay? So, we work with three set of heuristics. Nielsen's heuristics, transactional websites heuristics that we proposed, and Smash heuristics, heuristics for smartphones. So, obviously, we had a broader image and a better probability to detect usability issues, usability problems. Okay, probably customer experience will be the next big step. Just one of the big steps, because there are a lot of other things, you know, uh, like intera natural interaction, brain-computer interface, or uh, other issue, other topics. Usually, the practice is much more appealing for students than the theory. So you also always have to uh, apply it both, you know, a bit of theory and then practice, 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 okay? Analyzing case studies, explaining, this is how you can interpret this specific heuristic. And usability, user experience, customer experience practice should include both approaches, both formative and summative. So, okay, you can measure some aspects of usability, applying metrics, but some others you cannot measure, you can diagnose uh, usability. And also, this is very important, qualitative and quantitative methods. You can quantify, as, as engineers, we are used to quantify everything. Not everything can be quantified. So, the subjective opinion of each user is very important and it gives us a lot of information. A lot of uh, references, but I will pass, uh, you know, like a fast track. Uh, these are the ISI papers published this year. Uh, so, we are trying to uh, redefine the methodology that we proposed five years ago. So this is the research uh, PhD uh, of my students, Daniela. Uh, we also work, as I told you, with uh, Spanish colleagues uh, from Ciudad Real, from uh, um, Leida, from uh, Granada. Uh, and we try to establish a kind of state-of-the-art of human-computer interaction in Iberoamerica based on a survey that we did uh, uh, last year. Uh, this is a paper published last year but uh, appears formally as a 2016 paper. So, uh, smash a set of heuristics for smartphones, okay? This is a quite an interesting paper because it's a systematic literature review about everything published in the last 15 years on usability heuristics. So, there are, the, there are a lot of references, more than 100 references, and it's a quite, quite a nice analyze. The authors are from uh, Great Britain, and I think uh, the first author will have the same topic for the uh, PhD research. I sus suspect that, because of the title and because of the focus of the paper. It was interesting that 10% of all the papers uh, referred in this systematic literature review belong to us. So even if we didn't work for 15 years, because we start publishing in 2010, and this review does not include the paper published last year and in 2015. So it's quite uh, nice to see this kind of results. These are other papers published this year in several uh, areas starting with customer experience, what uh, I just show you. Also the process of developing heuristics and heuristics in some specific fields, for instance in uh, e-learning applications, uh, 
ubiquitous uh, learning applications and, uh, for instance, in driving simulators. A lot of other papers, starting with uh, transactional website and so on, till uh, virtual worlds, uh, grid computing. This was a collaboration with my colleagues from Romania. It was a European project. The methodology, the methodology that I told you about, and another survey that we made five years ago, so we can compare, you know, the results of the survey uh, from 2011 and the results of the new survey and our experience in teaching HCI, uh, published many years ago. Okay, some interesting uh, references like uh, standards, like uh, definitions, like computer science curricula and finally some websites. As I told you, all about Wekis, which is quite a nice site. There is a lot of information, information there, but it's quite difficult to manage this amount of information. So a student will not understand, you know, almost nothing. So what is a method? What is a tool? Well, it's not clear for the authors of uh, uh, this uh, website. Uh, actually, when proposing a methodology to evaluate something, for instance, a we transactional website, you have to review all these methods. So it's a huge amount of work. And my students, yes, they, they did this work. But it was quite difficult, you know, so you have to have some well-established criteria and uh, good judgment. Okay, uh, and uh, this uh, website that belongs to the User Experience Professional Association. I also like very much this website because uh, it offers a lot of indication, materials, you know, uh, how uh, should you prepare a usability report, for instance. That's all, thank you so much and Please ask any questions you want, in English, Spanish, or if you want, in Romanian. <laughs> Valenciano, I'm not sure I will understand, but I will try. I'm sure. Thank you. So, well, it's time to question. <laughs> de las heurísticas y yo me gustaría saber tu opinión acerca de, de las pruebas de evaluación de usabilidad con usuarios reales, o sea, ¿qué, qué opinión tienes sobre ellas y cómo se puede abordar, si hay líneas de investigación sobre ellas o cómo se pueden abordar estas pruebas. Nunca quedarse con una sola opinión. La opinión de los evaluadores en una evaluación heurística es muy importante si los evaluadores tienen experiencia, pero la última palabra, ¿quién la tiene? Los usuarios. Entonces siempre es bueno ver las dos caras de la moneda. Lo que sí es interesante y nos pasó en varias oportunidades, los clientes que nos pidieron informes de usabilidad no querían pruebas con usuarios. Le temen a los usuarios. Pero bueno, es lo que hay. Las pruebas con usuarios son costosas. Además, son costosas, exactamente. Y uno nunca sabe si exactamente lo que identifica a través de usuarios es lo que es lo más relevante, ¿cierto? Por eso siempre es bueno complementar las cosas. ¿Qué recomiendo siempre? Primero una evaluación heurística. Detectamos, no sé, 100 problemas y después comprobamos si ciertos problemas que pensamos que son críticos son realmente críticos o al usuario, a los usuarios no le importan. Sí, porque eso, yo he tenido trabajo con Federico y, y he hecho unos trabajos que me he encargado para hacer usuarios reales. Es obligatorio, sí, disculpe. Sí, no, te iba a comentar que, que a veces es, es sorprendente la, la opinión que tienen los usuarios Exactamente. para utilizar la aplicación, porque sí. tú a priori puedes pensar que va a ser un desastre porque no han terminado esta tarea o, o se han quedado bloqueados. En cambio, luego la opinión te, te sorprende porque sí. ellos valoran 
mucho mejor la aplicación de lo que tú Exactamente. Uno no sabe si realmente es que has planteado mal la evaluación o que la herramienta realmente no era tan mala como pero si uno hace un experimento formal, cuatro usuarios, mismo conjunto de tres tareas, 20 minutos, cada usuario tendrá su camino. Uno demora 20 minutos y el otro 5 minutos. Uno se queda pegado viendo cosas y otro... Entonces siempre eso es extremadamente enriquecedor. Y para ver que no es solo un discurso, obligo a mis alumnos, tanto de pregrado como de posgrado, a hacer mínimo una evaluación heurística y una prueba en laboratorio como mínimo. De hecho, este semestre le contaba a Federico que tengo cinco tareas en la asignatura de pregrado, de los, dos de los cuales son evaluaciones heurísticas, uno con el conjunto de Nielsen, porque en el fondo ese es más conocido, y otro con la, nuestras heurísticas de Smash, el caso del estudio Facebook móvil, para que todos las conozcan, ¿cierto? Uh, y después pruebas con usuarios. Y en el caso de las pruebas con usuarios, yo hago normalmente una prueba demo, le explico a los alumnos varios métodos, le muestro el sitio y que ellos, ellos elijan el método que lo más le guste. Lo importante es aplicar correctamente el, el método e interpretar correctamente los resultados. Eso es importante. ¿Alguna pregunta más? No, si no, sigo yo. <risa> sí. Has hablado antes por encima o has mencionado introducir un grupo de control. Me ha parecido sí, entender sí, sí, cómo sí. podría... Sí. Uh, en general las evaluaciones son cruzadas. Uh, yo trabajo semestre a semestre alrededor de entre 8 y 10 alumnos de pregrado. Yo estoy guiando. La tesis de pregrado dura un año por ahora, por lo tanto es un periodo bastante amplio. De hecho, ayer le mostraba a Federico una tesis de pregrado y tenía 130 páginas más o menos, 140 páginas. Me decía, ¿cómo? ¿Eso es un trabajo de pregrado? Sí, eso es lo que pido. Entonces, como 10 alumnos de pregrado, 2, 3, 5 de magíster, depende del semestre, 3 de doctorado, entonces entre todos nos apoyamos, ¿cierto? Tú trabajas en este conjunto de heurística, ok, pero otro grupo trabajará en otra cosa. Y siempre hay una población interesante, la gente que se forma. Porque normalmente yo dicto estas asignaturas en pregrado como optativos, un semestre HCI y un semestre Ingeniería de la Usabilidad. Casi siempre un alumno que toma una asignatura, toma la otra asignatura porque le gusta, le encanta. Es una mirada hacia el usuario poco común para el ingeniero metido solamente en sistemas. Por lo tanto, estos alumnos ya llevan cuatro o cinco evaluaciones heurísticas hechas. Por lo tanto, siempre hay voluntarios. A ver quién se ofrece porque la experiencia se gana practicando. Entonces, trabajan ustedes, grupo del mismo más o menos nivel, ¿cierto? Cuatro o cinco usuarios que eh, evaluadores que trabajan con las heurísticas de Nielsen, por ejemplo, cuatro o cinco con la propuesta nuestra. O depende de qué es lo que queremos comparar. Entonces, intentamos que los grupos sean homogéneos y bastante similares, por lo menos en términos de nivel de experiencia, ¿cierto? Lo que sí tenemos como limitación que los evaluadores son en general de nuestro grupo. Entonces esa es una limitación que siempre la declaramos en uh, lo publicado. De hecho, ya le había dicho que el proceso de validación de nuevas propuestas de heurísticas es el tremendo desafío. Destacado también en la revisión bibliográfica sistemática que le había mencionado. ¿Qué más estamos haciendo? Por ejemplo, intentamos coordinar. Por ejemplo, el caso despegar.cl, ahora se está analizando por un colega de Colombia, despegar.co. Y tentativamente por un grupo de España, pero parece que Tony no le llegó a hacer la evaluación. Entonces, después vamos a comparar los resultados para ver si hay alguna influencia del background cultural. De hecho, uno de los trabajos que hemos desarrollado fue un intento de Conjunto de heurísticas orientadas a aspectos culturales, partiendo por las dimensiones de Hofstede, ¿cierto? ¿Alguna pregunta más? Bueno, pues gracias de nuevo, Cristian, por tu Un gusto. Charla. Creo que hemos aprendido hoy mucho sobre user experience, customer experience, y agradecido de nuevo por tu charla.